Hey, it's Simon. And this is Martina. And we're broadcasting out of Kichijoji, Tokyo, Japan, the dry graciest of all of Japan. The dry graciest? No, this is just my transition to the topic that we want to discuss today. Oh, which you said is, the word drag race. Yes. Oh, I heard drag racious. And I'm like, are you speaking Polish? No, that was um, like ancient Mordor. Uh-huh. Drag racious. Ah. Uh, yes, you understand. I heard you just go muchos gracias. Yes. Which sounds a lot like uh, a different language, actually. Uh, this week's episode is going to have a heavy spoiler for season 11 of rupaul's drag race yes um if you don't know who the winner is or you mm. haven't watched the season at all i yeah. would recommend um this is your chance to tune out right i will say we're not just talking about that we're talking about um uh well too late we've already late. given the spoiler yes. so now we're going to talk so about ready let's count it you can leave in five four, four three, three two, two one. one okay time's up here we go okay so when it comes to drag race we were so happy this year because one of the queens actually has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Yeah. And not only one of the queens, but the best queen. My the queen, queen that won the whole thing. We were rooting for her right from the get-go. Yep. She was super awesome. And it was really interesting for us how we thought about EDS in coordination with RuPaul's Drag Race. Lots of thoughts on it. I'm just watching him struggle to get the sentence out. This is my table of contents for my essay. This okay. is where I do the opening paragraph gotcha. with three supporting sentences. Okay. Are we going to start the first paragraph now? I'm going to start the f- paragraph number one. Yeah. So first of all, Evie Oddly is her name. Yes. And um, we loved her from the get-go because she was much more of a quirkier queen. Right. And there's lots of quirky queens, but there aren't the ones that really let the freak flag fly. Uh-huh. And Sharon Needles was one of my big favorites as well. Like mm-hmm. anyone that's kind of like, you know... They're trying something that's just not typical and mm-hmm. they have to fight against not only their own confidence, but they also have to fight against everybody else telling them that they're never looking good. Exactly. Sharon Needles got ripped into when she showed up. Everyone said she was just a spooky queen. Mm-hmm. All she does is spooky. She can't be creative. It's just spooky. Mm-hmm. And then she came out and did one of the most groundbreaking things, which was cracking blood open in her mouth and smiling right. in a beautiful dressing gown. Yeah. And she really just sent everyone for a loop. I remember that Then one. we had um, our other favorite, Sasha Velour with her hat. Yeah, I wouldn't consider it. her like a spooky queen or like, a, but she was definitely She's a little more a weird quirky. queen. Is she considered a weird yeah, queen? Because her makeup is uh. um, very like surreal and she's bald and she like wore a crown without wigs. She's considered to be more of like a weirdo queen. I'll tell you like the thing that like if we're comparing Sasha Velour to Oddly Evie, mm-hmm. I like them both for being quirky, but I like them more for being very intelligent yes. because there are a lot of, I love the show. There are some queens that, Ain't the brightest crayon in the box. Yeah. Like when you listen to like what they're saying, when you like hear their like low confidence issues, when you see the kind of fights that they're picking, yeah. the kinds of things that they're saying, they're not all too bright, but Sasha was brilliant. Well spoken. Very well spoken. Like Bob the drag queen as well. Like nobody could try to put Bob down because nope. Bob was so smart. No, yep. I'm not talking about dumb insults. Like yeah. you're fat or you're ugly or you're stupid. Like nope. they were just really well spoken and they all had things they were fighting for. And I think that like it's a clear indication from what I've seen of RuPaul's Drag Race. If you're smart, you have a very good chance of making it all the way mm. to the end. I don't think RuPaul likes dumb queens. RuPaul likes smart queens because well, RuPaul's really smart herself. Yeah. Yes. H- himself, herself. Both of them. Both of them. They're both smart. Yes. I think that like the 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 one thing I will say is the word dumb is coming off across. Like we don't mean dumb as in like, yeah. you know, simple minded. Uh-huh. We mean that they're kind of focused on um, a short goal ahead. Like, yes. you know, I'm really pretty and, you know, I don't know why I didn't uh-huh. make it to this week's thing. And then uh-huh. someone will say, like, Evie Oddly will be like, well, probably because RuPaul kept telling you that you should wear this outfit. And then right. the person's like, don't you come at me, bitch. And right. the person's like, I wasn't trying to. Like, I didn't even say it. Like, yeah. it was RuPaul's. But then they're immediately latched on to, like, uh-huh. their low confidence issues come right at them. Like, yes. all those people who end up being on the, um, what's it called when everyone gets back together again? Uh, untucked. Yeah. not Well, not untucked. The one, the season. Reunion. Of, reunion. Yes. Whenever you see Reunion, there's always that queen that everybody couldn't wait to get off the show because right. they were in such denial about mm-hmm. themselves. Like Fifi was like mm-hmm. that, or this season as well. The girl who's like, "If you think you can Raja, come at me," and we're Raja. like, "Raja, like, what are you talking? Yeah. Like, she's Silky mad." Nut juice as well. Yeah, there were mm-hmm. all these people who are like that. But I think, mm-hmm. anyhow, we're going off topic because we're supposed to be talking about Evie Oddly's condition and yes. the effect. So mm-hmm. essentially, we love, we always loved Evie from the get go. Mm-hmm. And then one episode, she blows us away by mm-hmm. saying that she's got this condition called EDS. Yes, and we were both like, "Wait, what?" Right, and um. She doesn't describe it very well. Right. She describes it as like a bone condition or something. Uh-huh. Um, but I put put a pin in that because yes. I'm going to come back to the fact that she's young. Right. And she's only just getting to know what EDS because means. Because even when you were given your diagnosis of EDS, the yeah. doctor was like, oh, you're going to just like not have wrinkles. You're yeah. going to have very smooth skin. 
they didn't mention That's all, all they said. the pain that is going to come with it because yeah, the challenges there's and... no real pamphlet or brochure mm -hmm. that comes with it. like this generation is really the ones that are like raising more awareness yeah. and like letting more people know what's happening with eds mm -hmm. but like when you got diagnosed they're just like yeah i guess you get me right just a little bit stretchy they just <laughs> said to me things like i read about this once in medical school right like you should have no wrinkles and your mm -hmm. skin will just be really soft and stretchy and my mom and i are like oh it doesn't seem that bad meanwhile we're in there for a dislocation so I'm like, what does this have to do with this? But nobody ever made those little lots. Not at all. No. So when Audley was talking about her condition and she explained it in the show, mm -hmm. she kind of explained in a very simplified way that mm -hmm. we were kind of like, eh, that misrepresented a little bit. But at the same time, we realized that this is like a TV show. You can't get into all the details. You don't have that mm -hmm. much screen time in order to explain a really difficult concept. Not just that. I believe thoroughly that having gone through all this myself, like right. I've gone through the stages of misdiagnosis, mm -hmm. no diagnosis mm -hmm. to you're being diagnosed, but there's really no way to diagnose it. Mm -hmm. They're just like, yeah, we think you have this. Mm -hmm. That's like age 13, 14. Then going through MRIs and dislocation, you're going through all this stuff. And then mm -hmm. finally you realize you're not crazy, you have something. Mm -hmm. So depending on the stage that you're at mm -hmm. of acceptance of your condition and your disease, right. it, it is a different perspective of how you see people. Sure. She was even um, dancing at one point and you could see her in the background. Like I was watching her very carefully, right. like glued my eyes to her because yeah. I saw all of her little subluxes and dislocations. Yeah, right at the finale, like when she like flips back, like yeah, you, you can see, see her shoulder shoulder pop out in slow motion and she pops it back in yeah i'm not sure how many other people watch but first like i could see that pain right there yeah even when she runs out of the room she did this like joke run and mm -hmm. when she ran she put her arms behind her like this like uh -huh. i'm putting my arms behind me like as if i have wings like angel wings yes and that is a very common way that i have run out of rooms as a joke because it feels natural for your arms to flow this way when you have eds and it was at weird least HED does. because the whole time when you ran like that like oh that's just martina's cute little ism but now seeing it like represent on tv TV, maybe it's an EDS thing. I know. Maybe that's how other people run. And these are things that we never considered before. Mm -hmm. We never saw that kind of representation well, on TV. Because we never meet people with EDS. The right. only time I met anybody with EDS was strictly because of YouTube and our fan meets. Yeah. Thank goodness for the community we found online. Because right. I've had people come up to me in Germany, give me a big hug mm -hmm. at like a fan meet and say, I have EDS and so does my mom. And the mm -hmm. mom's like, hi, Martina. And like, we all had like a big huggy sob. Yeah. We've met people in Germany and we've met people in Atlanta. But I never would have just met these people on my own because how would we have connected with each other? Of course. And so then things like the Reddit EDS thread and other community pages like the Instagram pages of EDS, mm -hmm. you get a chance to see that there's things about you that you thought were weird that aren't so weird mm -hmm. for your condition. Like right. when you sit with EDS, it's really comfortable to take your legs and kind of like wrap them around like pretzels. Not just like one wrap, but like yeah. a couple like wraps a couple around. Wraps, yeah. So you go like over one leg and then you go back under yeah. and you link your foot. If, if you could see my fingers here. I can't even give an example I of my hand because... Yeah. It's like I have it's a, just really wrapped up yeah. in twine. So the way you got to think of it is that is right now, wherever you are, hopefully you're not doing something um, mm -hmm. crazy so that this doesn't look too weird. But mm -hmm. if you're sitting, you know, put your hand onto your chair, like as if you're going to support yourself and lean onto your arm. And when you do that, it should hit the elbow fold and you can't fold any further. Mm -hmm. Like there's like an elbow joint and then mm -hmm. it straightens. Mm -hmm. When we have EDS, it doesn't like straighten mm -hmm. like a line. It kind of pokes Hyper out the extends. other direction. Yeah. Um, and so what happens is that that's my comfortable point. The, right. the furthest extension, my thumbs are the best example, probably. Yeah, exactly. My thumbs go all the way 90 degree and that doesn't hurt. That's yeah. just its natural state. That's just state. your natural state. Yeah. So when you sit, your legs don't feel comfortable crossed because they're still kind of hanging in motion. Yeah. You have to wrap them one more time around each other like a like a twist T tie mm -hmm. for a breath. That's container. a good example. Yeah, yeah. twist tie. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of stuff like that, that that I thought was weird. And then I saw Evie sit like that. She came backstage after, after being on stage, sat uh -huh. down in the back room for Untucked. Right. Mm -hmm. And I saw her fold her legs up around herself and right. I was like <clears throat> it was such a crazy feeling to see that but the point of all this is mm -hmm. that this representation of EDS was exciting for me because I know that I'm kind of like the guinea pig generation. Mm -hmm. uh, people didn't know what EDS, EDS was. There wasn't Instagram. We mm -mm. didn't have the internet. Mm -mm. And so I know, and I feel pretty confident that there will not be a cure while I'm alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. There could be one by the end of it, but mm -hmm. like majority of my life I've lived so far in tons of pain and confusion. Mm -hmm. But what I'm hoping is that the more awareness that we do online about EDS mm -hmm. and meeting other people who have yeah. EDS and seeing like, you know, Evie mm -hmm. and stuff uh -huh. means that there'll be more money going into funding right. which is which will then have scientists start looking into it like yeah. for example out of all eds is actually called a connective tissue disorder with an s mm -hmm. it's disorders 
there's like 20 of different kind of disorders you can have. Right. And did you know that every single one of those disorders, they've been able to like genetically map so that you can have a DNA test to find out if you have EDS, mm -hmm. except for Yours. my type. Yep. So HEDS is the final one that hasn't been unlocked, which uh -huh. means they don't know how to study it to cure it. So yeah. we're like the, t because we're the least, um, I think, uh, sick as in like we could die quickly. The least danger. Yes. Yeah. Is? Yeah. Ist, yeah. Yeah. Well, like on a scale of danger, like, you know, people have cancer. Because there are other forms of EDS in which like your organs explode. Yeah. You don't make it past 12 or 13. Yeah. Like, you know, so. Those but, are rough. Yeah. But it would have been nice to know if I had that yeah. when I was 13 or 14. But, yeah, no you know, idea. it doesn't matter. So like we're pretty confident it's HEDS, which mm -hmm. means I have a whole bunch of things that will come with it. Mm -hmm. But this is the interesting part that happened that really confused the two of us. So mm -hmm. May is EDS Awareness Month. Right. And I follow the EDS... Um, people on Instagram. Yeah. I completely forgot their name, but I'm going to look it up. Ellers Daniel Society. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Um, and they did for the month of May, they wanted everyone to kind of like help out with awareness. So we had these little challenges where yeah. you could post up like pictures of you like this or things to pass on mm -hmm. or, you know, get people to bring a pamphlet to a doctor. Mm -hmm. Like it's supposed to help. That's awareness. why like the first video we did of May was like talking about your wrists and kind of like EDS awareness in yeah. a way to like talk about like, hey, there's something wrong. We still don't know what it is. Yeah. We just found out recently. Yeah, just last week. Which just yeah. I'll get to. You'll but get anyhow, to. Mm -hmm. um, so because of this, it basically felt like, oh, this is great. I can see all these people sharing their EDS and it'll really help. They even had some funding on a cruise ship and someone yeah. donated because right. it turns out their daughter has EDS yeah. and they're rich. And so they put money. So like when the more people find out they have uh -huh. EDS, the more people will be affected by it, the more funding. Right. However, it affected me really badly. Yeah. And this is the strange part because I couldn't see this coming at all. Yeah, of course. But seeing in my stream every day, um, three to five Instagram photos of other fellow zebras, they're called zebras, uh, other fellow people with EDS, mm -hmm. all different types of difficulties mm -hmm. made me have such incredible mixed emotions i saw people who had my condition uh -huh. with like um wrist braces on and ankle braces on and like neck braces on and i felt so sad and so sorry for them mm -hmm. followed by immediately the recognition that that's me too mm -hmm. like I, I saw them and i was like oh my god i feel so bad for this girl like what a struggle and then mm -hmm. i'm like but you do that struggle mm -hmm. but i've created some kind of like a disconnect between me martina and me martina with eds mm -hmm. because the martina who has had e eds forever has been in pain forever and doesn't know the difference but mm -hmm. the other martina is the one who was in sports and very very active and mm -hmm. didn't think about it mm -hmm. so when i see somebody with a brace on or, or with a mobility aid mm -hmm. on like paper mm -hmm. like on a you know instagram feed right i don't connect that to myself yeah i don't see this as me even though that is me i wear sure. a brace every day yeah like I, I kept thinking of myself as someone who doesn't wear a lot of braces like oh i don't wear that many braces mm -hmm. i just wear one to two a day <laughs> but you wear them every day. Right. But it doesn't, and you know. So when you were like watching this every single yeah. day, it was constantly making you check in with yourself. Yeah. This idea that like, wow, this might happen to me in the future. Like yeah. I might get worse like this. I might have this come yeah. out. And it's like, I have a lot of stomach problems where I think I've told you guys before yeah. that, like I throw up once or twice a month, which has yeah. been getting better because yes. we've been trying to figure out my triggers. Right. But there are people who don't figure it out and they have to get, you know, the stomach line put in yeah. because they have the, some, bag. the bag because yeah. they're not absorbing the nutrients. That's the problem with throwing right. up and having like diarrhea. And it's that's a the fear nutrients. that you have. And yeah. seeing that like constantly reminds you of that fear. Yeah. Like there was a, a an issue that we had with each other in which like, I was very nervous about Martina's condition and her worsening of her condition. So every day I'd be very much like, oh, do you want to do this? Like, are you like able to do this? Like, how are you feeling? Instead of just being like, hey, let's go out. And you telling me yes or no. Yeah. It was me constantly making you check in on yourself. Mm -hmm. That was like kind of like being a bummer. It's a coming from a positive place. Of course. You know, and that's the problem with this this mixed situation is mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm frustrated at Simon for mm -hmm. constantly forcing me to check in on myself. Yeah. But then I can't be mad at him because I know that what he's doing is so positive. Kind right. of like when your mom or grandmother's grandfathers say something that's like, sure. you know, and you're like, mm, but you know, they're just being like yeah. loving. But we got to like change our approach yeah. so that we can like make sure that your mental well-being yeah. is okay and that you're not constantly worried, not constantly thinking about how much pain you're in. Because the way that I'm thinking about it now is that we have been discussing this concept of having a toolbox. Yes. And this toolbox is something that we can get into when I need help. So if I'm having a really bad, pa achy pain day, Simon can say, let's open up our toolbox. And mm -hmm. he can say, do you want to take a bath? Like, I know there's not a bath in the toolbox. It mm -hmm. just means like a a metaphorical yeah. toolbox. Someone will say, do you want to take a nap? He'll say, why don't I put on a heat patch? Mm -hmm. Why don't you take the sleep medication to help you get some rest tonight? Let's How get a your brace. Let me yeah. take, tape you up. Should we you go know? for a walk? Do yeah. you need to stretch? Like there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do. And mm -hmm. I now feel very capable regarding how to react to my body. Mm -hmm. But it's my mental toolbox that I think is totally 
covered in cobwebs. Mm -hmm. I've been so busy trying to just keep up with all these injuries that I'm having Mm -hmm. that mentally I didn't realize a question like, do you want to go? Are you sure you want to go? Is it okay? Do you feel all right? Yeah. I didn't realize that that was grating away on me mentally. For sure, you know? Because I have no, I have no mental shield. Right. Like, so I've realized that we've got to basically start building up a mental health toolbox. Yeah. Ones where I know, like I told Simon at one point recently, I know that I'm uncomfortable with like a certain subject, mm-hmm. but I don't know why yet. Mm-hmm. So for now, let's just not talk about it too much. Sure. Well, before... Um, Martina would have said, let's keep talking about it until I figure it out. And then I'd feel frustrated and I'd get upset and I wouldn't know what's wrong. But now I'm kind of realizing that I kind of need to take it easy on Mm -hmm. myself and I need to think about the fact that I am mentally exhausted with dealing with this condition. Sure. You know? And EDS Awareness Month, while we're very happy that like it raises Mm -hmm. more awareness, at the same time, it comes at a cost of you constantly having to think about your poor health. Yeah. And that's something that's not super fun. And we're not sure how personally beneficial that is for Mm -hmm. you. In the long run, getting more awareness out there is great. This is why we're so happy that Evie Mm -hmm. won the whole thing because Mm -hmm. like we try to talk about EDS, but we're just a small YouTube channel. This is RuPaul's Drag Race. It wins Emmys. And if the queen, if the winner of it all has EDS, she could talk about Mm -hmm. it more. She could Mm -hmm. explain it more. It'll be in more magazines, more people talking about it, more people thinking about it. Even as she gets older, she'll start having to look into her condition more because right. I know that she's quite young right now. So yeah. she's not in that much pain yet, and but this, it gets worse. And mm-hmm. if she's in heels and dancing and jumping, she'll be able to cope with the pain because we basically get stronger pain wise, yeah. but we don't get stronger mentally. Right. And like, I really want her to be, you know, able to show people how she's changing because she's a smart girl. Right. So, and a smart guy. So as she makes her way through, Mm -hmm. she'll be able to like slowly start reflecting less and less on makeup and clothing. And maybe as she gets older, she'll start changing her perspective. The same way how RuPaul went from just drag and drinking and drugs. And then as he got older, he made big shifts and started Uh being more LGBT. Like, you know, we got to fight for rights and Mm -hmm. like, you know, we need to be more well spoken. And then he started to like, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's bloomed from it. Right. You know what I mean? Which is why, like, I wasn't too upset at mm-hmm. Evie also for not talking uh, about yeah, EDS. Yeah. Because, like, I remember, like, 10 years ago, you didn't have the same no. kind of idea. You didn't know what was going to happen with EDS and with you. Mm-hmm. And maybe Evie doesn't have that kind of, like, focus. I'm not sure mm-hmm. yet. I'm just saying that I wasn't too upset at her being this young and not talking about EDS to the extent oh, yeah, I'm that... I'm not either. You know, but, like, at first I was like, maybe we want... No. Mm-hmm. So it was a kind of, like balance for me trying to go back and forth and thinking well about i it. remember the moment that i think i connected the most with her which uh-huh. is when she was dancing with todrick hall mm-hmm. and he was doing um you yeah. know stuff on stage and evie was kind of lagging behind because i saw her mm-hmm. knee twist funny mm-hmm. and i could tell that like she hurt herself mm-hmm. and then todrick takes her aside and he's like you know is everything okay are you all right mm-hmm. and you see her eyes look left right like she kind of does this little panic skitter mm-hmm. like a kind of like one of these mm-hmm. and then she just looks at him and she's like oh no i just have like an old injury like it's fine and she yeah. looked down and up word for word the kind of things I say to people because when you wear your knee braces or your arm braces or Mm -hmm. whatever everyone will either ignore it or ask you about it when they ask you about it you have to either decide if you're going to give them the long spiel about what condition you have or if you're just going to say like I injured it in sports yeah so most of the time I fall on I just injured it yeah and it's not at all it's just an iceberg it's just the very tip of what you did sure I injured it and some people are more inquisitive and some people ask and some people don't they'll be like okay yeah you know and And I'm not mad about it yeah like I don't think you have to get involved in every person's life of course it's just more um you're worried about making that person uncomfortable because Mm -hmm. some people are very good with hearing that like if you tell them you have like a an, an illness or a disease or you're suffering from something They can be very receptive, like, oh, me too. Or like, oh, I have a family member like that. Or, oh, I heard about this. Right. But other people get really uncomfortable and they Mm -hmm. feel like they have heard too much personal information Mm -hmm. and they don't really know what to do with that information. Mm -hmm. So I try to judge if I think the person will be very uncomfortable or panicked or there's not enough time. Right. But you don't want to think about all that on RuPaul's Drag Race. No. Todrick Hall, who's amazing, just asked you if you have a problem and you don't want to sound like you're making an excuse. No excuses. Just keep on yeah. pushing forward. Yeah. I think that's one of the reasons why we understood Evie differently than other people as well because Evie came across as very harsh for some yeah. queens. Like uh, some queens would get a critique by RuPaul mm-hmm. and, and the crew and then they'd come back to the room and be like, I don't understand what's wrong. They'd I'm, complain about I'm it. amazing. They don't and then, you know, Evie would be like, 
well, next time, if you don't want these kind of critiques, do the thing that they said you need to like change yeah. your silhouette. You need to change your makeup and this to that. And then the people are like, why are you being so calm? Blah, blah, blah. Why and are you they, being shady? Why are you attacking me? And they me? were so angry at Evie for telling it straightforward as it is. Yeah. And I think for us, we kind of empathized oh, a yeah. little bit more with Evie because the I'm idea that forward person too. the idea that we had is a lot of these queens view this as like the beginning of their careers mm-hmm. like this is their springboard that they could launch into something else evie wound up saying that she's not sure how much longer she has yeah she viewed this as like her probably her last chance mm-hmm. to do something this big and so she wants to do it right she's not going to be like oh i don't have to change anything she understands i have to put all my energy into doing everything that the judges mm-hmm. want in order to do this the right way but keeping it her own way true right to herself and i don't think other queens had that same sense of urgency yeah. maybe they did but i was able to empathize with evie mm-hmm. a lot more than i could with the other queens well you can see immediately uh nina was probably the only other queen that changed super fast yeah so as soon as the judges said that she is not wearing a corset and her figure doesn't look good yeah the next Next time she was on the runway, she was wearing a corset. Yeah. And that's because what? Nina's older. Yeah. And she's been trying to get on the show for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And so she appreciates the fact that there's a time limit or like an end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I do think that that is one of the blessings that comes with having a condition. Yeah. Um, if you have a condition that uh, in any way shortens the not your life i mean mm-hmm. it could shorten your life but mm-hmm. shortens it the way that you imagined it right like i imagined that i would be active until i couldn't be yeah. rather than i can't be active and i'm only like in my 30s yeah. like i thought that that would be something that happens in my 70s and 80s right my mom is probably more active than me with you know like so it just feels well i shouldn't say that i'm quite active but you know what mm-hmm. i'm trying to say like mm-hmm. the age gap mm-hmm. um but the point is is that i i feel like I understand that there is a limit to life. Mm-hmm. So for me, I'm living so in the now. Mm-hmm. My build a ladder. So intensely as you can. Intensely in the now. Yeah. You know, when I wake up and I latch onto that ladder to get out of a pit because mm-hmm. every day it resets. Like yeah. I sleep so poorly, yeah. not because of choice. Right. I try everything I can to go to sleep mm-hmm. on time or not on time or relaxed or bat- bathed or headphones, mm-hmm. medicine, whatever. It still doesn't work because right. you wake up from pain. Painsomnia is like a real thing. Yeah. And you feel miserable and exhausted. Yet the next day I say... I'm going to get out of bed. I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to go outside and I'm going to do something Mm -hmm. or I'm going to make music or Mm -hmm. I'm going to, because I've only got so many days. So I'm living this on like overdrive is what I'm thinking. And I know there'll be a time period where I'll, you know, maybe move back to Canada Mm -hmm. and we'll settle in and Mm -hmm. then I'll be living from my home rather than traveling about and doing these other things. Sure. But everyone else that I talk to that, that has excuses is really, it's really hard for me to swallow as well. Just like Evie. Yeah. Like if somebody's my age and they say, like they can't do what we're doing because mm-hmm. it's hard to move to Asia and Japan. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, we did it. It's hard. Yes, it's very hard. It's hard. It is very it is hard. Very it's hard. very difficult. Go for there it. are lots of obstacles, but you just do it yeah. one bite at a time. Yeah. You just keep on pushing forward yeah. and doing it. You yeah. know, like when people message you and they want to know like what visa you have or like, how did mm-hmm. you apply for this? Dude, you are only at the beginning of your journey. That's not something anyone can look up for you. Homie, I wasn't country... able to ask anybody about visas. Like no. I just had to go in there and figure it yeah. out. There was no help. You just like flounder until you get it right. Yeah. And it's know? okay. You will get it right mm-hmm. if you try. Eventually. But if yeah. you don't try, it's not going to get right. And so for me, like Evie's attitude of being like, just fix it. Or mm-hmm. like, why are you saying this? Like, yeah. why are you complaining about this? It's like, tough. So what? So what? It's tough for everybody. Yeah. I really enjoyed watching this season as mm-hmm. well because one of the things that was really special to me is watching you watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Watching me, watching you. Like watching the way that like you connected with Evie for me was very special. Hmm. And I wondered if other people that are watching our videos and mm-hmm. they see what you're doing, they see the issues that you have with EDS, mm-hmm. if they felt that same kind of connection oh, i never thought of it that way I, I i've read people's comments say yeah. that but i never really understood it mm-hmm. until i watched you watch rupaul's mm. drag race and when i saw like how connected you were with evie yeah. and like how like whenever she danced like we'd be like oh my god i really hope that she doesn't hurt herself like you were yeah. like so like connected my sheet, yeah. it, it really like everyone else like oh she's a cool dance but we're like oh my god please don't roll your ankle yeah. You know? But see, that's why I feel so close with everybody yeah. because when somebody in the comment section or like people on Twitter when I'm awake really late or mm. on Instagram say, I'm having a really rough day today, Martina, like, yeah. you know, I'm really proud of you for getting out there or like build that ladder girl. Mm. It's because they actually know. Yeah. Like you guys are not lying to me. You know what it's like to lie there with your body full of pain while nobody else understands it. Right. Well, people are like, I don't know what that feels like. And yeah. you're like, and you never will. Right. You will never 
ever feel how much pain I'm in. Right. And so the struggle that we go through to get going or to push through, mm-hmm. I think is something that only other people who have it can understand. Sure. And that's why I feel so close and connected with everyone online because yeah. we're like uh, our own race of people almost. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, of course. We can be Asian, we can be, you know, American or African or Canadian, we can mm-hmm. be Italian, we can be from Australia, whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you all have EDS, you all kind of have the same thing. Man, mm-hmm. woman, yeah. it doesn't matter, you know? Anyhow. So we're, we're almost at our end here. I'm worried uh, that this might have um, stopped. Do you want to pop up and check? Let me pop up and check. <laughs> While you pop up and check, I'm going to sing a song. Is it recording? I don't know what the recording limit is on this new camera. I should have probably figured that out oh, first. Oh, because I started that first and yeah. now it's at 25. So yeah, we're at 25 there also. So, so uh-oh. Usually 30 minutes? I, I don't know. So. These cameras change all the time. But let's just be safe. And yeah, Okay. And so before we go, I'm going to yes. ask you guys a question. Okay. Um, three questions number, number one number one have you seen rupaul's drag race season 11 were you happy yes no uh-huh. um number two who is your favorite queen and why is it oddly evie yes. <laughs> <laughs> number three why did you just like silky not megan yes. why did silky suck so oh, much she had such a bad attitude it made oh, me so mad my God. Which, there, the only thing i'll say is there wasn't any character i disliked more than silky like it was very close like really? there was fifi like, i didn't like vixen from last vixen. season really got to me but good googly goo like silky was just i needed her to stop yeah right away it seemed like what everyone felt on her first oh episode. my god yeah i think that mm-hmm. one thing she did do was is that i think she dressed not the best when it comes to some of those weird outfits she did but yeah. for being a big girl because she said mm-hmm. she wanted to dress with the big, the big queens yeah i think she looked the best when she I don't know. came out i like eureka uh, as a big queen more. I like Eureka but Eureka always wore the typical ball gowns like there's yeah. a ball gown look that big queens tend to wear yeah. but when it came to Silky Silky came in at the beginning of the day wearing like a crop top and something else and she mm. looked really good like yeah. she somehow knew because of her confidence she mm-hmm. was able to pull off these looks because it is about confidence mm-hmm. you know and she never tucked and she never like you know pulled things in but no. sometimes she just looked really good and I'm like how did she do that okay but then she had bad attitude I didn't like that hated her attitude question number three Question number three. We're hoping to do a live stream this week since I've been oh, struggling again with right. my hand, right? Yes. Um, so I want you guys to vote on this. We were thinking of doing convenience store, uh-huh. Japanese convenience store food. Yes. We're going to do the Italian edition. The Italian edition. Which we will only purchase the Italian Japanese is food. Is the Italian? It, Italian. This chips, is my is Italian, it Italian accent. It's somehow it French. French? This I don't know. Right. No, we should be doing more like a like a... We're we should do something that might be offensive to somebody. Offensive. <laughs> Let's oh, not well, do this uh, anymore. Uh, now I just sound now like more Dracula. Dracula. You guys know we're not trying to offend anyone. <laughs> okay. So it's either the Italian edition or no. what was the other one? We want to do Chinese delivery because it's such a oh, right. different what thing What is Chinese here? food like? And there's a huge Chinese chain yeah. and I'm really interested in Chinese food here. So let us know if you want to see a Chinese food delivery mukbang yes. um, or, or a Italian, Italian convenience store food. One of those two we're really interested Please in. Please let us know in the comment section yes. below. Um, we miss you guys. I'm, I'm hugging the microphone mm-hmm. and I have a week to go before I can take this off. Right. But then well, we'll talk more. We'll editing. talk more about your wrist in our live stream and like what we found out <laughs> for now. We just want to say thank you. Uh, Evie oddly oddly Evie. I keep on yep. getting those two mixed up. Yeah. Um, thank you for winning and representing EDS. And I really hope you could bring in a billion dollars for research. That's your next next task. Thank you. <laughs> and start. And, and she start Jacques ice bucket and challenge go. part two. Let's get it done. I don't want to dump ice bucket on me. Can we do something else like the cupcake bucket challenge? Oh no. Oh no. Cupcake. You have to buy three different flavors of ice cream and eat them. Oh, oh my. No. What a challenge. The EDS challenge. E. What's the, what's the flavor of E? Uh, Easter Sunday. I can't think of a single <laughs> name of a ice cream for E. For e? Of course you can't. Uh, electric shock. No, 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 no. Okay, what's D? Uh, D. Dough, cookie dough, and S for. Oh shoot, this sucks. But this we could sucks. do EDS where you pick three different flavors of ice cream. Okay, I'm leaving. Good one. Bye guys. <laughs> See you later. <laughs>